Hello, welcome to Meep's Math Matters. I'm Meep. In this episode, I am answering the questions I had in the last one on the pigeonhole principle. I'm going to start with the last question I asked, which is, if you put five points in an equilateral triangle that has side two, at least two of the points will be less than or equal to distance one apart. Now, knowing that this is a pigeonhole principle problem, first you need to figure out what are the pigeons and where are the pigeonholes. Well, the pigeons are easy. Pigeons, those are the points, okay, because I'm saying something that they are within a certain distance. Now, this is telling me I need my pigeonholes to be geometric regions. There need to be four of them so that I know that two of the points are in one, one pigeonhole, and for each region, I need to have the points in each region to be less than or equal to one apart. If you look at the triangle here, notice I have the midpoints of each of the sides marked. Okay, that means it's half the length here, so that's a distance one. And if I connect the dots, this is all also distance one. I'm not going to prove this right now. You can do it using um, uh, postulates or theorems about congruent triangles. So notice I have four equilateral triangles. They're all side one. And so if I have five points, at least two of them will belong to the same triangle. Note that, you know, if I have a point on the edge, it can belong to either triangle. That doesn't, that doesn't actually hurt. So this is a little rubbery pigeonhole principle. But if I have two points in the same triangle, they are going to be distance less than or equal to one apart. Um, the farthest, for, the e for equilateral triangles, the farthest part you can get are the corners, which here are distance one apart. So that is an interesting use of the pigeonhole principle. So here's a pigeonhole. Let me just say, here's a pigeonhole. And there's a whole bunch of pigeonhole principle uses in geometry where it's not just like discrete things, but you have to figure out how to divide things up into the pigeonholes. It's not necessarily obvious. It's not obvious that this is how you should divide up the triangle. Um, this division of a triangle is very common, and I, we will be seeing it again when I go over fractals, uh, possibly when I go over geometric series. So we will be seeing this again. Um, so, and it comes up a bit, so keep that in the back of your mind. And this makes a nice little brain teaser. Keep some of the kids occupied. If you're a math teacher, um, try this one out because it's relatively simple when you explain it to a student, but it can take a very long time to, for them to figure out on their own. It, it is very difficult to figure this kind of thing out on your own. The next set of questions was that sock drawer in the dark problem. And I'm just going to start out with the two colors. We say we have two colors of socks. And we found that if you pick three socks, you get at least one matching pair. So now the question is, say you want two matching pairs. And I'm going to start with the, the case where both pairs, so four socks, are the same col color. So let's say we want two matching pairs, or I should say four matching socks. Four matching socks. Okay. Okay, so I want them to be the same color. So our, again, our pigeonholes are the color of socks. Uh, usually we do black and white, so we'll just say black and white socks. How many do I need to have so that I have at least four socks of the same color? Well, if I have three here, four here. If I have seven socks, okay, seven socks, then at least one of the two boxes is going to have four, because if you have three in one and three in the other, then you'll have one left, and it has to go in one of the boxes, and then you have four. Let's look at, say, we want three matching pairs or six matching socks. Oops, let's go back, do a different thing. So again, if I have five here, hmm, I have six here, 
in, yes, and putting them all in the black box, it doesn't matter, it could be the other way. So I have 11 socks. Let's say if it was eight matching socks, okay, then I'd have eight and seven, it'd be 15. Kind of see um, a formula here. If I have two in matching socks, then if I have four in minus one socks, that will do it. Okay, so let's look at that because if I have, I can have 2n minus 1 in one box and 2n minus 1 in the other box. So each of them has less than 2n socks. If I put that together, that's 4n minus 2. And if I add one more sock, I have 4n minus 1 socks. It has to go in at least one of the two boxes. And then I will have two in socks in that box. So that's the general case for my two colors. Now let's look at the next case, say three colors, and I want two matching socks. Okay, let's say our colors here are black, white, and orange. So if I have one in each of the boxes, that's three and I have one more. So this is our standard pigeonhole principle. So this is going to be um, four socks. So for the next one, if I want four matching socks, I could have three. So the name of the game is, you know, try to do it as spread out as possible. So I have three in each and then one more will push me over the edge, 10. For six matching, I could have five in each box, so that's 15, and if I have one more, it has to go in some box, oh, I'll put it in white this time. So that's 16, pushes me over the edge. So, in this case, instead of two in, I'll say M matching, and so if I have M minus one in each of these boxes, so that'll give me three M minus three, plus one more will push me over the edge, will get me m in each one, so 3m minus 2. Now you can see this will generalize. The general problem is this, you have k different sock colors and you want m matching socks. So I have my pigeonholes, I'm labeling them c1 up to ck, and then to get my m matching socks, I put m minus 1 in each box, okay, so that gives me k times m minus 1. And if I have one more, that'll push one of the boxes over the edge. That's how many socks I need. If I, um, sorry, if I extend this out, I can see that as m times k minus k plus 1, or mk minus k minus 1 in parentheses. You can try this out. This is like a generalized pigeonhole principle. Just say the sock colors are pigeonholes. And the socks are the pigeons. The actual socks you pull out are the pigeons. I did have another version of the, the question where I wanted a certain number of matching pairs, but all the pairs didn't have to be the same colors. That was kind of trick. That wasn't really a pigeonhole principle question. That's more combinatorics. I may get to that at a later time. You should investigate that for yourself. The exercise, it's left as an exercise for the reader, as the textbooks say. And I may revisit that at a later time. But then again, maybe not. As always, you can contact me at marypat.campbell at gmail.com or you can comment on these videos. I read the comments. And as always, go out there and spread the math love.